All right, guys. Uh, today we're gonna go over something that most of you think is probably silly. Um, you, we're, we're gonna talk about gapping an Iridium spark plug. Um, believe it or not, most of you watching this probably don't know how to gap a spark plug properly. You might uh, have something that looks maybe like this that you gap your spark plugs. Worst invention ever. If you have one of these, throw it away. It's junk. So today we're going to show you how to do that and you can laugh all you want to, but just watch the video. You might learn something. So let's go. Okay guys. So today I think what we're gonna do on this one is gap all four of these HKS plugs uh, just to show you the whole process on this. So let's start off with one. Open this bad boy up and pull this protective sleeve off. So the HKS plugs are really nice, really well built. Um, if you compare this to other plugs that are out there, you can see the differences right off the bat. We're not going to get into all those today, but HKS plugs is what we use on most of our stuff. Um, we do use the NGK race plugs as well, which are great for certain applications. Um, both of those, we have tons of them here. So with that said, uh, the one thing you saw me earlier, toss this out of the way with Iridium plugs, you do not want to put any pressure at all on the electrode that's in there. Um, the way that these work is they wedge in between the electrode and the bridge or the, I guess the electrical strap, I don't know what the technical term for that is. Um, but what it is is it slides in between and you're literally pulling it and wedging it apart. So you're applying a lot of pressure on the electrode and these will snap right off and if they don't snap off right away it's going to cause problems in the future. So any of you guys that have these round keychain looking things from O'Reilly's or AutoZone or anything like that, please just get rid of them, light them on fire, make a necklace out of it, I don't care, but they're not made well for spark plugs at all, not the new stuff anyways. So if you're driving around in a 1960 Chevy or something and you have some old school plugs, this will probably work, but not for any of this new age stuff, so get rid of that. The proper way to do this is, first of all, you want to measure them, because sometimes they come right out of the box um, pre-gapped. So they should be pre-gapped to uh, 26, 0.026 to 0 0.030. Uh, that's usually the standard. Sometimes they're way off, sometimes they're right on the money. So what we want to do, we want uh, 0 0.028. So what we did, I have my filler gauges. You can use your standard filler gauge like this. You can use, this is a wire tool. Um, the problem with these is they come in 0.025 0 0.030, 0 0 0.03, and they just go up from there. Um, so we're in between these two. Um, so I usually use a feeler gauge, but what we do use on this is this tool for widening the gap if we need to. Um, in using this, we don't put any pressure on that electrode, and this is this, if you don't have one of these, you need one of these. Um, so I'll show you that in a minute. Other filler gauge tool you can get that are really cheap um, would be something like this, and it, you know. Again, you get into odd sizes in these where they don't, so for instance, we have a 20, uh, we don't have a 28, right? So, but we do have five, six, seven, and eight. So what we do is put, combine the two together, the 0 .008 and the 0 .020, that makes a 0 .028. So we can mesh them together like that. And what we want to do is just, if you push them together like this, that's great. You want to slide it in between the bridge part and the electrode. So right there, this one's a little bit big. So we're probably at a 0 .030 to be honest. So what are we going to do here? There's two options. One, we can run it the way it is if you're not anal. Um, or we can fix that. There's two ways to do that. One, the old school way, would be to take the plug, turn it upside down, and you're gonna tap it on the concrete um, or like a metal vise or something like that. And that's perfectly fine. People do that all the time, it works great. 
Um, so we'll check that again just with these. Now we have same thing, right? 0 0.008, 0 .20, 0 0.020, which would make the gap that we need. Push them together or slide this in between. That's perfect already. So now we're, that little bit of tapping right there, ladies and gentlemen, is all it takes sometimes to, to tighten that gap. So it is also important, and people don't really talk about this in the forums and everything else, is when you run a plug for a long period of time, pull your plugs out, recheck the gap. As things get heated up in the engine, um, these gaps, they'll increase. So this, this strap will end up trying to open up. It'll try to pull away. So you always want to double check that, okay? So that one, that one seems to be good. So in the event, so getting back to this, the other way to tighten that gap is to use what, one of these tools here. We found these from Torque Solutions, and these are a brilliant little, little tool. So it's a lot more precise than tapping your plug on, on the concrete in this fashion. What you're going to do is it's threaded. They have two different sizes. So you have your 14 and your 12. 14 would be like more for your bigger muscle cars, stuff like that. We don't really need that, but I just brought it out to show you that we have it here and, and what it looks like. They all come in black for the 14s. For the 12s, they all come in, in, in red. So what we're going to do is screw the plug in into the tool. Screw this up, open this up a little bit. Okay, so now we have the plug in the tool. We can actually screw it all the way in if we want. Make it easy, or I like to just go about halfway. Okay, and then we're going to screw this down. And what you do is, if you need to decrease the gap, you're just going to tighten this knob, and it's going to literally push in the strap towards the electrode. A lot of times while you're doing this, you just want to move it a little bit. You check your gap, move it a little bit, check your gap. What you don't want to do is put your feeler gauge in between the gap and then crank it down. Because what you're doing again now is putting pressure on that electrode and you're, you're right back to square one using this thing again. So this plug is perfect. Let's go through these next four, three plugs and see what we're at. And let's gap them. I'll show you. See, hopefully we get one that's way off or something. I can show you how to do that. So let's pull these open. All right, there's another one. Let's check the gap on this. This one. A little bit big. So just a hair big, not even a lot. You could probably run it and never run into a problem, but since we're here, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so let's tighten this down. We're just going to go a tad bit there. Now you could do a filler gauge before you take the plug all the way out, but I know we're close, so... That's absolutely perfect right there. It's 0 0.028. And we'll check with these filler gauges. Perfect again. So that's two plugs gapped. Let's check the third one. That one right out of the box is a little bit big again. So let's tighten that up. One thing with the wire one I didn't show you guys how the wire works is you just, same thing as the other one, you just slide the wire in between. So I can almost get, well, I got a, third, a 30 in there, so it's at 30. So let's go ahead and tighten this down. Screw your plug back in. Okay, and let's get this tight on there. And then just give it a little crank down. Doesn't take much. Uh, let's give it a check. A 
looks good there. And what I'm doing is double checking with two different feeler gauge sets just to make sure I'm getting the same reading on both. That plug is good. Now I go to the last one. And what we're going to do if this one's perfect, we're going to make it unperfect. We're going to screw this one up. So that way we can show you how to open the strap if you need to. Of course, this one comes out of the box perfect. So let's say you get in a situation. Let's tighten this down. Let's tighten this strap down. So let's say... You get in a situation, you get a plug out of the box, maybe they dropped it or something and it, it hammered the strap. And uh, you can't get your, your feeler gauge in there, it's too tight. Oh, damn it, it's too tight. So what are you gonna do? Well, this is where this tool gets handy here. So instead of trying to wedge something in there like before we were talking about, this has these little forks on here. So what they're made to do is you put them in the strap and you bend them up, just like that. So you're going to put them in the strap and you're not putting any pressure on the plug and open the strap up. You could also use a screwdriver, a flathead, anything like that. As long as you don't touch the electrode, you can use whatever you want. So let's see, we are almost there. Pretty good, but we're going to open it up a little bit more. So get your tool in there. There's different ways. So this one's a little close to the electrode for what I like. I like to use this little little section here. So let's lift it up a little bit more. I think we went too much. Yep, we went a little over 30. So let's go back in here. Snug her up. Close her down a little bit. So let's check it. Let's go more. Check it. Right there, fellas. I like that. So that's at 0.028 or 28 thousandths of an inch. And that is the proper way to gap your iridium spark plugs, whether they're HKS or any other brand. Um, anytime you have a, and if you don't know what an iridium spark plug is or how to tell the difference, iridium spark plugs have a little tiny electrode. They're, they're like, look like a pin, pinpoint or something. So if you have a spark plug or run across one that looks like this, that's how you gap these. Do not put any pressure on those electrodes. On um, the proper tool, you want to get this wire guy here. You get yourself a set of filler gauges. Um, you can get more primitive, primitive with a screwdriver and using some kind of hard surface that's more than feasible as well. Or you can go and find one of these torque solutions. We can get them for you. We don't have them on the site. They're a special order deal. Um, to be honest with you, we picked these up off of Amazon. And uh, I think the uh, this one we got from Nippon Racing up in... Um, was it Sacramento, California? Um, so yeah, just you can use these guys and that's the way I, we do it here. So if you have any questions on this, just feel free to let us know, give us a comment, hit us up on Facebook. Um, if you like to see these kind of videos to teach you how to do this, this stuff, give us a like, subscribe, um, and just let us know what you think. So we'll have another one coming at you soon and hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys. Take care.